where do you think we are right now with AI, uh, not just in health, but as a society? Um, I think we can differentiate AI maybe a little differently than we tend to because we talk about AI in healthcare. Mm -hmm. There are certain aspects, AI, as we're talking about it in general, because it's a broad field, is can be very useful. But it also can be very much abused. And, and that's what concerns me. It's abused because people get very excited. It's a new technology. They would like it to solve very complicated problems, but a lot of them don't know what the question is that they really wanted to solve, and that's where the challenge is. It's proven to be very useful in operational issues, um, streamlining certain processes, um, things where correlation can be very appropriate. But I find it still a challenge to see that it's addressing the more complicated problems. Mm -hmm. And I'm torn between whether it can going forward or what we're encountering is with all the hype, people are using it inappropriately or for inappropriate things, applying it out of excitement mm -hmm. and sort of diverting us from going down the path that will give us the most success. Interesting. That's the concern I have. What is, uh, what's the difference between AI and like quantum computing? Oh, well, quantum computing is, is it's sort of like, um, uh, it's a mechanism that you use to allow much broader AI to be applied, bigger computers, faster computers. Quantum computing is really um, more of the technology that you can use to create the to create the AI. You do the AI using quantum computing. I said, and you worked with um, quantum computing at least on the idea of it for a long time, right? Yeah. What was that? What was the company you were working with over COVID? Quantum um, Cute Computing Inc. I see. Yeah. What, what do they do? Um, they basically they're doing a simulation using algorithms that will be applicable to a quantum computing environment. Right now, they've moved more into the hardware side mm -hmm. from from the um, software side. But at the time, we were doing, we, we were taking advantage of the fact that we could build very, very large parameter spaces. Mm, gotcha. So quantum computing is the computing that uh, the AI uses to spit out the answer? AI can use it, yeah. AI yeah. can use it. What, what do you think the potential with the quantum computing is? Again, you know, right now we're still challenged with the, building the real quantum computers. Um, it still has to be driven by what are the problems we need to solve. Mm -hmm. it, it works very well in security areas. In healthcare, it still needs to be defined how it's going to be applied. Um, we actually were looking during COVID at using it to build very complex systems to try to optimize vaccine distribution. Mm -hmm. it, we didn't get to do it, but it, it was the kind of thing where we felt if we built a system with high enough complexity, we could almost use the quantum computer to dial in changes and get very rapid feedback as to how to change distribution routes where things were needed and shift things in a very dynamic manner. Gotcha. So, so overall with the AI and quantum computing, am I right to say you're not sold on it being what uh, a lot of people think it is today? I think a lot of, <laughs> you know, um, the joke I always tell people is I'm afraid that some people who are applying AI don't know how to spell it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it's accessible mm -hmm. and people should play with it. But I don't know that they recognize what it can and can't do mm -hmm. adequately. Yeah. I think it's, it's still in what they 
Gartner calls the hype phase. The hype phase. Have you ever seen the movie Idiocracy? No. I just had a thought. Like, I wonder if, like, we're programming this AI to be dumb. And, you know, I, I forget how far in the future that show was, or that movie was. But if we became, like, these dumber beings because of yeah. programming the AI wrong to, to well, think for and, us. And, yeah, I, and I see some of that happening. Yeah. I mean, chat GPT, I mean, I, I enjoy it. There's, it's, it's very useful in many ways. But I'll set it up with questions because I, I feel like I know part of its bias. And well, yeah. When we could, we could spend another hour just on that. But, <laughs> you know, when you become dependent on prompts, mm -hmm. then by definition, you're biasing what you're going to get out. Mm whether you recognize that or not. Right. Yeah, so it's a big blind spot in the AI per se. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I found. Um, I had a friend, actually uh, uh, did a podcast with him that barred the, uh, yeah, it said that he should be put to death, which is kind of scary for him. He's like, yeah. you know, based on, and, and it made up something that he said that he never said. It used yeah. a quote from him. And uh, it's pretty, you know, that's, if people believe that that's, you know, right one, I mean, there's so many, I love it. Don't get me wrong. It's fun. I use it. Again, but. I, I, I strongly believe it has very powerful, appropriate applications. Mm -hmm. The challenge is people go beyond those boundaries right. and don't understand that they've gone beyond what its Capable. real capabilities are. Yeah, Absolutely. It can do everything. It can solve every problem. But well, and I, I, I fear that a lot of society is looking for a lot of things mm. that for technology to address. Mm -hmm. And you know, I the other thing I always tell people: technology is the instantiation of a solution to yesterday's problem, and doesn't know what today's problem is. Mm.